I would like to discuss uh, genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, which is injected into cows to increase milk supply, since milk is such a popular topic today. How many people have heard of bovine growth hormone? All right. So this was originally introduced by Monsanto, and it was approved by the FDA in 1994 while Michael Taylor was in charge of FDA policy. Michael Taylor was Monsanto's former attorney. So he was overseeing the approval process. Margaret Miller worked for Monsanto and did research on bovine growth hormone and then took a position as the director of a branch of the FDA, which then reviewed her research. Susan Sechin did research, did contract work for Monsanto on research on bovine growth hormone, and then became the FDA's chief reviewer. So it was a setup. I talked to Dr. I talked to Dr. Richard Burroughs, who had worked at the FDA at the time, and he was the only one who was competent in dairy cows. And he was a veterinarian, and he was looking at the research requirements being put forth by the FDA to Monsanto. There was actually four companies vying to, create, to produce a bovine growth hormone. And he was shocked because it was simply not sufficient. And he ordered more research and then was fired because he was slowing down the approval process. He sued the FDA, and in the trial, his superior admitted that it was a setup to kick him out. So the FDA was forced to take him back, but then put him on chickens and never let him access any of the data on bovine growth hormone. I talked to a former Monsanto scientist who told me that three of his colleagues had done the safety studies on the milk from the cows treated with bovine growth hormone. And after doing the studies, the three Monsanto scientists refused to drink milk thereafter unless it was organic. One bought his own cow. Their main concern was the high levels of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. In the milk, there's more pus because there's more mastitis, an utter infection. There's more antibiotics used, so there's more antibiotics in the milk as well as potentially antibiotic-resistant bacteria. There's more bovine growth hormone in the milk, but the thing that was of most concern was the IGF-1. IGF-1 is in milk. When we drink milk, we increase the levels of IGF-1 in our blood, in our system. Premenopausal women with high levels of IGF-1 are seven times more likely to develop breast cancer. Men with high levels are four times more likely to get prostate cancer. It's also linked to colon cancer. It's one of the highest risk factors for cancer. What it does is it causes cells to divide. So it may not initiate the cancer, but it's like pouring kerosene on a fire to speed it up. It also promotes fraternal twins. It promotes the production of additional eggs as well as creates the survive, increases the survival rate for the eggs. So fraternal twins are higher when there's more IGF-1. In fact, someone from Columbia University who is an expert at twins wrote a paper in the Journal of Reproductive Medicine in 2006 which concluded that the reason why the United States has a much higher rate of increase in fraternal twins compared to the UK is because of the use of bovine growth hormone in the dairy industry. You see, UK and Europe in general have banned bovine growth hormone, as has Japan, Australia, New Zealand, most industrialized countries. Canada was looking at bovine growth hormone and the Director General of Health Canada was going to approve it simply because it was approved in the United States. But a scientist, Shiv Chopra, said, you can do that because you have the right, but I will let Canada know that we did no evaluation. So he, his insubordination was ultimately rewarded with him being able to oversee a review of the FDA's approval of bovine growth hormone. And they wrote a paper called the GAPS Analysis Report, showing that it basically was a facade. 
They took the industry's conclusions at face value, never looked at research that showed serious problems in mice, and they treated it as an animal drug, ignoring entirely the fact that humans would be drinking the milk from the animals that were treated. The Richard Burroughs told me in an interview that the industry rigged their research to, to try and pull a fast one over on the FDA. And he described specifically many ways how they did that. One way that Monsanto's friends rigged research was referenced in an unprecedented article written by FDA scientists in Science defending the approval of bovine growth hormone. And they said that there is no significant increase in bovine growth hormone in the milk, but it doesn't matter even if there were because it's just 90% is destroyed during pasteurization. Well, there was actually a 37% increase in a hormone in the milk, which was pretty significant, but actually they didn't look at Monsanto's hormone. They looked at a different hormone that was competing with Monsanto that used 2% of the dose and did it on a daily basis instead of every two weeks. So it was a completely different drug. Then they referenced this 90% being destroyed during pasteurization. The researchers who did that pasteurized the milk 120 times longer than normal pasteurization. They only destroyed 19% of the hormone. So they added powdered hormone in huge amounts, 147 times the natural occurring level. Heated it 120 times longer than normal. Under those artificial conditions, 90% was destroyed during pasteurization. And that's what the FDA reported. So right now, Monsanto sold off bovine growth hormone to the veterinary division of Eli Lilly, Elanco. So Elanco sells the bovine growth hormone and to a lot fewer dairies now than 10 years ago because of a tipping point. And bovine growth hormone increases the IGF-1 in the milk. Increased levels of IGF-1 are linked to breast cancer, and Eli Lilly sells breast cancer medicine. So they're milking cancer. So I wanted to share this information because it is a genetically engineered drug. They took E. coli, put in cow genes, turning the bacteria into a factory to produce this hormone inexpensively. And then they rushed it through the approval process with insufficient testing. Canada, by the way, ended up banning it. And Shiv Chopra was in a meeting with the other scientists, meeting with the Monsanto representative, and said that Monsanto offered them a bribe of one to two million dollars if they approved it. They went on national television saying that they had been offered a bribe. And Monsanto said, oh no, no, you misunderstood an offer for research money. Now, to avoid drinking milk with products from cows treated with bovine growth hormone, you can look at the carton and it says either organic, they're not allowed to use RBGH, or it'll say no RBGH or no RBST or no artificial hormones. All of them mean the same thing. Now, on the carton is also a sentence which says, according to the FDA, there's no significant difference in the milk from cows treated with bovine growth hormone compared to those that were not treated. Now, that sentence was written by Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney, as a white paper and as a suggestion. It was never required. But once it was written, Monsanto used that to sue dairies, initially, who had claimed that their products did not have RBGH, putting one or two dairies out of business, and more recently convinced some states to require that on any milk carton that says no RBGH. So even though it's not true, 
According to the FDA documents, there's more pus, there's more antibiotics, there's more bovine growth hormone, and there's more IGF-1. You may read this false statement written by Michael Taylor on the milk products in the store. There's also cheese and yogurt and other dairy products that can be made from this, this treated cows. Fortunately, we've been educating parents about the health dangers, and Walmart kicked it out, Starbucks, Yoplait, Dannon, most American dairies. So it is a success story. It's still legal in the United States, but its use is dramatically reduced. So if you still drink milk after today, Look for the organic, which is better than all of them. Okay. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, Brian will pray for you. <laughs> Thank you.